regardless of what side of, of a political spectrum somebody's on, you can hear it from the other side that encourage we do this or with love we make this policy decision or with you know with care we do we do x or y right so you know and obviously one side will believe the other side is completely wrong and and how how do you gauge whether the shedding of fear in a sense is proper and beneficial for you or if it's something that you're doing um that could be destructive. In, in, right, that can be right. destructive. Right, okay, so the previous example I gave was more simple. In a tennis right. match, you know you need a win, right? It's pretty obvious. When it comes to more complex things like politics where both sides have a good premise from which they're coming, but that are fundamentally opposed, I think it, 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 it requires an analysis of what the history of both of either ideology has um, brought about, right? So what's most important with regard to handling these political things is not just truly studying things with an actual open mind, it means speaking to people of all types of opinions and seeing what the intention that they have is, the good intention, because it all starts with a good intention. Every person cares about their family. Every per almost every person cares about making their country a better place. And they believe that the policies that they have are going to do that. The problem is that the two sides end up butting heads very opposingly about those things. You can see it in every single aspect with regard to gun rights, right? Conservative people generally believe that you should have access to whatever weaponry you want in order to stave off tyranny from the government, to protect yourself from someone else who has the same type of equipment or better. That's their rationale. People from the liberal side believe that if, if anybody can just get a gun, they can kill a lot of people, and that's a big tragedy, which of course it is. So then the question is, how do you resolve it? If you have both sides just talking about increasing, not restricting guns at all versus restricting guns totally, there's no dialogue. And the point of dialogue is to truly understand is to understand. It's not even to compromise. Let's worry about the next steps later. Let's talk first. Uh, I'm personally proud that, I mean, I don't know if proud is the right word, but I have a lot of friends of varying, varying types. Old friends, young friends, men friends, women friends, Republican friends, uh, Democrat friends, and we talk. We talk very honestly. And we don't have a problem with each other because no matter how we may differ in any regard of our classification or our beliefs about life or where we are in life, when we spend time with each other, we have some common interests and we like each other, you know? We bond over tennis or music or videos or walks and talks or philosophy. We bond over a lot of things. And so we have a good time together. And that's what matters. And of course, when these, uh, when when disagreements arise, whether it relates to politics or whether it relates to anything someone might disagree disagree on, politics being a big one because it's so toxic in the external world, uh, it's annoying. It's definitely annoying. But I have never actually lost a friendship because of it. Though though we've disagreed, though we may have fought, and though though those conversations weren't good, we've always resolved it. And I think that the country can do that too. If they, if they reach out, not from the standpoint of defeating the other side in that moment, not from the standpoint of just championing their own views, but from the standpoint of talking and understanding. And that's it. And I'm not saying that, you know, then the, 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 then the fear comes and the implication, oh, well, if I actually talk with the enemy, that might mean the liberal might think that that means that they can't ban guns. The conservative might think that that means that they are going to give up their guns, right? Don't think about that. Don't worry about it. First talk. Understand. Again, you can't necessarily change the reality. You're one person. You're one person living in a country of 320, 350 million. I don't even know how many people there are, right? That's how many people there are. It's ridiculous how many people there are. You can't change the reality, but you can increase your understanding. And from there, 
the, the toxicity goes away. There will always be disagreements between husband and wife, between friends, father and son, mother and daughter, aunt and uncle. There are always disagreements, varying political parties. They're just disagreements.